Bonjour, buenos dias, magandang umaga. Welcome to the inner sanctum of my chamber of chakras. And thank you for joining me on another episode of Astro Affirmation for October 11th, 2023. Wistful Wednesday. Yes, the peak of the week. Wednesday is named after the Nordic god, Woden. He's a sky god and he's associated with the Roman god Mercury, which is the name of the closest planet to Earth, the swift planet of communication, intellect, and short distance travel. Miércoles in Espanol and also in Tagalog. Yes, Miércoles, Mercury, right? The moon in Virgo is disappearing from the Earth's perspective as it approaches its eclipse of the sun. In astrology, the moon represents our inner world, our moods and feelings, while the sun symbolizes our outer experience and appearance okay so what is happening beneath the surface of this facade is an active mind observing and analyzing my environment to improve and refine my surroundings through logic and practicality. Yeah, I'm Virgo like that. With a waning crescent moon in Virgo approaching the new moon solar eclipse in Libra in three days. Y'all must feel it, right? That emotional need to organize, to put things in order and get real, right? Get real, people so we can become the person that we were born to be. Workshop Wednesday, get clear about what you want and where you want to go. Where are you going? Get clear. Express your heart's desire today by calling a meeting of the minds and hearts with your team, right? Network and catch up on important events to brainstorm ideas for a new creative project to be of service as you balance your relationship to yourself, to God, and to others. Hear, hear your heart and listen to her. Yes, as you think about the energy that you're projecting out into the universe, Okay, pay attention, observe without judgment and decide what you want for yourself that is for the good of everyone. Okay, that's the idea of this season. The balancing of relationships so that everyone involved is happy because everyone is being treated fairly and justly, right? So here at the top of the week, the top of the mountain of our creation, let's stop for a moment and reflect. Contemplate the work you've done so far and look at the big picture. See it from the end or the end from the beginning, you know, like zoom out. See it from, from you know, where you are see the end from the beginning okay Ouroboros, right the end and the beginning meets at the same place where the snake eats its own tail yeah take a moment to take a look at that see the end from the beginning and decide the direction you want to take for your final destination we are all 
in the same spiritual journey, traveling on different roads, yes, but it all leads to the same place, right? So let's help each other along, united in our oneness as we walk in the light and live by the Spirit. Sing with me. have some coffee talk and tea spillage. I got mine here in my red coffee mug for the color of the day is red for the root chakra, right? It's raining here in the IE. Yes, all of a sudden the clouds rolled in and poured. I mean, it's been clear these last few days. Well, yeah, we had magnificent sunsets. I mean, the colors of the earth chakra showed up after the sun set two nights in a row. And the sky's clear, free of clouds. You see all the stars in the sky. And then all of a sudden, boom, it pours. Yeah. So it's a bit chilly out, out here, you know, out there in the balcony. I was out there this morning. Yeah, it's in like the 60s. So I have my red sweater on today for the root chakra activation. Yeah. I also let my hair down this morning and my scalp was like hurting, you know. So that means it's time to wash my hair. I put on this red velvet headband on. It's definitely time to wash the hair. So, yeah. Just keep it from, from getting messy, you know, keep my hair in order. Yesterday I talked about how in my old age I prevent disappointments in life by not having any expectations. Remember, if you watched my show yesterday, um, I was feeling, you know, like I had this need or this feeling of security was like based on, you know, my expectations, right? And a lot of times my expectations are so great that nobody can fulfill it <laughs> but anyway I was saying that the way I counteract that is to not have any expectations I mean that's good advice on some level but not to be taken like to the extreme right I do have expectations still but when they don't come up to par with my vision, you know, I don't get all bent out of shape about it anymore. You know, I used to, I used to get all bent out of shape, you know, with my perfectionism and I frustrated myself to the point of giving up, you know, and quitting is not an option. You know, if you want to achieve your goals and objectives, 
you can't quit you can't give up you got to keep going yeah I felt like quitting you know I had to like raise my six kids and put them through school you know and many times I wanted to quit but I, I couldn't quit on my kids I just kept going and now that it's over whew, Yes, now I'm reaping the benefits of what I sowed. But, you know, what I was talking about yesterday about not having expectations so that you don't get disappointed. That's in dealing with the outer world of humanity. You know, on the other end of the scale, the other end of the spectrum is prayer, right? Praying for something or someone is all about expectations. Yeah. You visualize what or who you're praying for. You know, that brings to mind uh, my daughter Trinity's, um, one of her best friends, Chewie's partner, Archie, is in distress he is um was diagnosed with tuberculosis and he's in the hospital rehabilitating for like six months i think so please keep him in your prayer so i asked my daughter tlc aka trinity lauren Connolly, please send me a picture of archie so i can visualize him because that's how you need to pray. You need to think of the person. How can I think of the person when I even don't know what he looks like? So she sent me um, a picture of him and I prayed for him last night, visualizing him in my mind, okay? So that's what you do. You visualize what or who you're praying for, okay? And you set your mind on expectation of them getting better or you know whatever it is that you're praying for um, set your mind on your expectation and feel that it's already there that it already exists like feel it as if you already have it okay like it's real you know but that's the difference between internal and external management <clears throat> of human beingness. It's the balancing of the physical and spiritual sides of our nature. Yes, we are ending another lunar cycle, right? We are at this spot right here. Okay, at the tail end, but then it's also at the head end. We're at the tail end of this past lunar cycle, beginning a new one, which is the head now. Okay, cycle. So if you set your goal on the last new moon, you know, you set your clear intentions at the last new moon, right? Like I showed you this Daruma doll. You should be accomplishing that goal that you set back then. Now, you got three days before a new lunar cycle starts. So it's important that you complete whatever you've been working on, whether it's, you know, working on yourself or working on helping others or whatever project you started at that new moon complete it now before the new cycle begins because the new moon solar eclipse in libra is coming up this saturday october 14th which starts a new lunar cycle so you can plant new seeds of intentions to you know keep going up 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 forward forward up 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 <laughs> the upward spiral Yes, you know, because every day we try to be a better person than we were yesterday until we 
reach nirvana before we die, right? So yeah, we are also in transition, right? From Libra to Scorpio, because Scorpio season starts on the 23rd of October, right? And October actually ends with a full moon. I think it's on the 28th. Yeah, it's a full moon lunar eclipse. Another eclipse, but it's lunar this time on the 28th of October. And it's in the sign of Taurus, my sun sign, where the sun was, the astrological sign where the sun was when I was born. Yeah, and then two days later after that, Halloween, when the veil between the living and the dead is drawn open, right? Yeah, we can walk through back and forth, this side to that side. So it's a power-packed October that we're having on the seven year, right? Batten down the hatches. Hold on to your britches and don't let your panties get all bunched up. Watch your words, especially today, because today Mercury rules. So, yeah, it's the planet of communication, of expression. So watch your words as they come out of your mouth so they don't turn into swords. Okay? Okay, so the ruling chakra of the day is the root chakra. Okay. Oh, we're back down to basics, guys. Yes, and red, as you can see, red is the color of its light. Okay, and there's my mandala for the root chakra combined with the colors of the sacral, orange, and the, the solar plexus, yellow, right? So that's like a representation of the three lower chakras, these three, root, sacral, solar plexus. And these three lower chakras is what I call the soul because they deal with the relationship of the human being to the physical world, you know, our basic needs, right? Our physical identity, our emotional personality, and our external image, okay? The upper three chakras, the throat, the third eye, and the crown, okay, I call the spirit because they relate to higher consciousness, divine truth, intuition, and life purpose, okay? So I call the, the, these three soul and these three spirit, and then the heart stands alone between the physical and spiritual chakras. The heart chakra is like the fulcrum in a balance, right? If I turn it this way, the heart chakra will be the fulcrum in a balance, right? The pivot point. The pivot point of the flow of energy from the earth and sky, integrated, transformed, and united here at the heart chakra, okay? The heart chakra is where the balance of the physical and spiritual aspects of our human nature rests, okay? In unconditional love and compassion. Today, good. Yeah, so today we are back down to basics. The root chakra is the first spinning sphere of energy in our spine. It gives us our sense of security, grounding us to earth, where our bodies came from, right? The root chakra is like our umbilical cord to Mama Gaia, connecting us to earth energy. 
The Sanskrit name for the root chakra is Muladhara. Muladhara. And it means root support. Okay? Because the root chakra is the foundation of our energy body at the base of the spine. The tailbone, that's where it's located in that area of the tailbone or coccyx, whatever you want to call it, in the core of our being. Yeah, the root chakra is the gateway that must open in order for that electromagnetic field that surrounds our body in a toroidal shape, in order for that to flow freely through the rest of the chakras in our core, you know, and back down again, right? The current of the electromagnetic thing. And as you can see, I, I drew a rectangle around the outline of the human um, body and the chakras inside because I wanted to show my connection of the seven chakras to the seven parts of the tabernacle of God described in the Bible, the one that God told Moses and his people to build, okay? Yeah. So if you can see here, I labeled each chakra with what I think is connected to the seven parts of the tabernacle of God described in the Bible, okay? I feel that the tabernacle of God, Moses' tabernacle of God, is the external representation of the true tabernacle of God, which is within each of us. Just like I said before, the root chakra is the gateway to open the rest of the chakras for the free flow of energy. The tabernacle has a gate and you enter those gates to move up to the holy place and then the holy of holies up to the Ark of the Covenant. I thought that was interesting. Because, you know, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? Yes. And also in Luke 17, 21, Jesus Christ himself said, behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Yes. It's our core. The root chakra is where the kundalini, the divine feminine energy in all of us, that's where she resides. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> At the root chakra. <coughs> the root chakra is the bed of that sleeping snake. You know, that's all coiled up, the dormant coil, right? The sleeping snake that we stir. We stir awake to power up that dormant coil and convert that potential energy into kinetic energy. Yes, right? Kundalini rising. Yeah. Get it active, right? And the mantra for the root chakra is lam. Lam. Lam is the sound vibration that clears the root chakra from toxicity collected there from negative energies, right? Yeah. So when you chant lam, feel it reverberating throughout your body, you know? through all the cells in your body, right? Lighting up dark thoughts, vibrating dense, heavy feelings and lifting them up to higher frequency, okay? 
the root chakra is the origin of consciousness as seen in its symbol. See, can you see the symbol here? Right, it has four petals. One, two, three, four. Recently, my brother, Norman P. Goko, AKA the Nam, yeah, he reminded me of the other representation for the four petals that I had mentioned before in my previous videos. Um, the four petals of the root chakra. Yeah, he used the acronym MICE, M-I-C-E, to remember what each petal stood for. Mind, intellect, consciousness, and ego. Those are the four facets of the human psyche. Okay, mice. Mind, intellect, consciousness, and ego. Thank you, Norman, for teaching me that word association to help my memory. But you know, the four petals also represent the four corners of the earth, north, south, east, and west, as the element of the root chakra is earth. Yeah, I've read also that the four petals symbolize the four elements of the material world. Earth, water, air and fire okay um and it corresponds with the four states of matter right solid for earth liquid for water gas for air and plasma for fire right so that square there there's also a square in the center of the circle of consciousness right you scoot up a little bit so you can see it better. There. See the square? Right? In the center of the circle of consciousness. That square is actually a cube. Like here on the shawl, it's flat, so it's 2D. But in 3, 3D is a cube, right? Which is the sacred geometry for Earth. Okay, a cube is made up of six square faces in the shape of a cross. Here's how I made my model. You see, six squares. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, right? You fold those squares to make a cube. Six square faces. Right? It's a cube. The sacred geometry for Earth. The symbol for the root chakra also. But the idea that the root chakra is the place of our crucifixion. I've said that. I mentioned that before. That the root chakra is where we're crucified. Crucified in this material world. In this physical corruptible body. Right? Yeah, I trip out sometimes. Because anyway, that idea that the root chakra is the place of our crucifixion in the material world and in this physical body, and the fact that the symbol for the root chakra nets out, right? The cube is the symbol for the root chakra. The fact that the the cube nets out to a cross, it piques my interest and curiosity. I'm all the time like that anyway, like Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> well, curiouser and curiouser. <laughs> yeah. So ground yourself to earth today, okay? Go barefoot walk barefoot on the grass on the sand if you're at the beach 
feel the warmth or the coolness of the soil on, you know, bare ground. Feel it between your toes. It's like, get all up in it. Hug a tree, smell the flowers. Talk to the birds and the bees. Yeah, get outside and soak in the sun. Well, there's no sun out here right now because it's raining like I told you. Yeah, but yeah, meditate. Go inward. Enter the tabernacle of God within you. Okay? Here are some Bible passages to reflect on today. The first one says, Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. That's 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. The next one says, The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose. And they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. That's from 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 8 through 9. And the last one goes like this. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. That's from Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. That's all I have for you today. And once again, I honor God in you and me. Namaste.